So welcome. Can you please state your name and where you're from? Hi, so my name is Oralia and um, I am from Sunnyside, but I live here in Tri-Cities now. Can we get a round of applause for Aurelia? So we are so glad to have you here, but can you tell us, so what was your life like before Christ and before your deliverance? So I grew up Catholic. Um, I never knew of God. Um, it was mostly Mary. Um, if you would just go into our home, it was like Mary here, Mary there, rosaries everywhere, even in our cars. Um, and so um, I grew up in a home where my father was very abusive mentally, physically, emotionally, ver verbally, not just to my mom, but to my siblings and I. Um, I have five other siblings, so we all kind of went through it. Um, and he just always um, talked down on us. Um, and so because of all the abuse done to my mom and to us, um, that kind of led me to an addiction to marijuana and alcohol. Um, I started smoking and drinking alcohol by the age of 11. Um, so, and through that addiction, um, I kind of just filled a void that I was missing from my parents. Um, there was no love, there was no connection and no relationship with either of them. You know, my mom was absent because of all the abuse. Um, and so that led me to the um, drinking and smoking. Um, so my dad was very hardcore alcoholic. Like he would start drinking at like between hours of three and five in the morning. Um, and so I saw him, you know, pour out water bottles and put liquor in it. So I poured out water bottles and put liquor in it. And I would just kind of carry that throughout my day to numb um, just all the pain that I was going through. Wow, so you went through so much leading up to your deliverance and the process getting here. You went through so much abuse, so much trauma, but can you tell us how you ended up at Hungry Gen and how you came to Christ? So I ended up at Hungry Gen, um, so it, through what my best friend's boyfriend, um, he actually got delivered here. Um, we were just hanging out one night and um, talking about scary stuff and documentaries and movies. And he was just like, well, do you want to see something that's real? <laughs> and um, he pulled up this, you know, deliverance video and um, he was getting delivered from a spirit of legion. And um, at the time, um, I had already been going to a Christian church maybe for a couple months, um, but they didn't talk about deliverance or healing or anything. So um, this literally just flipped my world upside down. I had so many questions. Um, and so, and the relationship that I was in at the time, um, and through all the abuse, it caused me to move out of my home. I, I was 17 when I moved out. Um, and so this um, person that I was dating at the time, um, he was also very abusive and physically, mentally, spiritually, all the ways. And he was a Christian too. So um, through our relationship, um, there was just a lot of abuse. And um, so I texted um, my friend's boyfriend. I was like, hey, you know, I think he's demonized. Um, how do I get him where you were, you know? <laughs> And so um, he gave me somebody's number and we were texting back and forth. And that person invited me to um, a prayer line. I have never heard of prayer line before, but I came and I didn't come for me. I came for, you know, the person that I was in a relationship with. Um, and while I was here, um, we were getting him registered and a person asked me, um, well, are you going to be in the prayer line? And I was like, no, you know, I'm not here for me. I'm here for him. And so um, she encouraged me to, you know, go through prayer line. And um, that prayer line was in 2017. It was New Year's Eve. Um, and I didn't understand what really went on, but I know I got delivered from something. Um, and so then after that deliverance, um, I got baptized a month later here at Hungry Gen. And um, a month after my, my baptized, um, my dad ended up murdering my mom and he committed suicide. And so um, instead of, you know, going to the Lord, um, I turned my back on him and I did my own thing, um, more smoking, more drinking, um, just to numb all the grief, the pain um, that I was feeling at the time. And so then I ended up getting out of that relationship um, and I moved to Pullman and um, moved in with my um, now fiance, Aaron. Um, and so it was in Pullman where, you know, the Lord came 
and knocked at my door once again. And um, so I was only watching online, um, but through online um, services, um, I was delivered um, from, I was delivered from the addiction at, uh, to marijuana. Um, but it was always kind of like, kind of had it in my mind that I still would smoke sometime in the future. Um, but then also there was a service talking about, um, I didn't mention this in the other times, but there's a service where they prayed for witchcraft. And um, there was like something starting to manifest inside of me, um, but didn't fully come out. And the race to deliver and federal weight was coming up. So I signed myself up and I drove from Pullman to Seattle um, to go to that. And so um, I got delivered from witchcraft that a family member, you know, put up on my family. And, um, and even through all of that, like I just still wanted to run back to smoking. Like I just was one foot in and one foot out. Um, I wasn't all in. Um, so I put myself through a lot of torment and suffering that shouldn't have been there. Um, and I think my turning point was um, last October, I got into a car accident. Um, and I just heard this service, you know, or Pastor Vlad said, um, if you ask God to break you, that is the fastest prayer that he's going to answer. And I'm here to testify that that is true. <laughs> um, but even through all the, you know, all the things that I was going through at that time, they were just horrible. But I wouldn't be here where I am if I hadn't asked God to break me. Um, and so... Um, through those months, I just went through a lot of like, just cleaning out all the garbage and um, like letting go of like music and stuff, movies that I watch. Um, all of that was like holding me back. Um, so um, in December, they announced a 21 day fast and I wanted to prepare myself for that fast. So I did a two to three day fast. And it was at the point where I almost gave up um, in those two, three days. Um, that I went into my bedroom and um, I prayed and I actually went through self-deliverance in my bedroom and God delivered me from a spirit of Jezebel and just all the grief and depression that came from my parents' um, death. And I was also delivered from smoking marijuana to the addiction. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on. God is so good. He is truly a restoring and delivering God. Amen. So can you tell us now, now that you've been delivered, now that you've been set free, you've been clean from smoking for over two months now, and what would you tell someone who's going through that journey now? I also wanted to mention one more thing. I suffered with migraines since I was 13. I'm now 24. Um, last weekend, we had an encounter weekend um, through life class, and I was healed from those migraines. Um, even prior... Even prior to Encounter Weekend, I had a headache that was like lasted two weeks, like just every single day, all day, um, just never went away. And so um, I was healed from that. Um, but my advice would be, you know, when God knocks at your door, just go all in. Don't keep the foot in and foot out because you will put yourself through torment and suffering that you don't need to. And just hold on to a certain verse. You know, God will put something on your heart that will take you through it. For me, it was Philippians 4.13. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Come on. Yeah. That was so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing.